And we often ask this of our clients, what excites you most about my business or this challenge? Mm -hmm. There does seem to be a shift back to having that one agency who can help bring it all together, mm -hmm. play that quarterback for that internal marketing team. We are invested in their success as much as they are. Gratitude is a superpower. All right, I'm David Fabry. I'm Chief Strategy Officer here at uh, LaSasso Integrated Marketing. And today I'm talking with uh, Tracy Glabowski, our Head of Client Services, and Julia Perso, our uh, VP of BizDev. Uh, and today we wanna to talk about finding the right agency partner. Uh, so I guess to start with, um, why do you think it's important to find a right fit agency partner? Well, it's, a big decision that a client makes to select a partner, it's an investment and it's an investment in a relationship. And you want to make sure that that relationship will be successful, that you can do great work together. And ultimately that that investment translates into driving the business forward and producing those business results mm -hmm. that require getting that buy-in to continue that investment in marketing. Sure. Yeah, and I think that investment is a long-term relationship, mm -hmm. um, and that's really why it's important to make sure that that partnership is strong and solid and can um, really survive those ups and downs, which mm -hmm. it comes with any relationship, sure. whether it's personal mm -hmm. or within um, the business setting. So I love that idea, right, of finding the right partner and sort of the importance of it. Um, but how can a marketer go about finding the right agency? Like, what are the important things they should be looking for? I know sometimes people think about industry experience. Uh, how important do you guys think that is? It is important in certain categories that we know are highly regulated, right? So a client might only be looking for agency partners who have that regulatory experience in financial services or healthcare. There are ways that you can assess from a capability standpoint if they have adjacent industry experience mm -hmm. that can translate into understanding similar marketing challenges or understanding the mindset of that consumer or B2B buyer. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's, a, it's a delicate balance of not being too rigid and requiring that agency to have that direct experience. Mm -hmm. We have found that clients often appreciate an agency who brings a different perspective, sure. right? They may have worked with a partner who only has had experience in that category. And so that perspective is often based on you know, the same type of approach and experience. And so bringing that outside perspective has often been successful in infusing that mm -hmm. new approach or bringing new ideas to their marketing plan. I know one of the reasons that clients like some specific agency experience is because they don't, they feel like they don't want to have to train their agency from ground zero mm -hmm. in terms of understanding their audiences. Um, in terms, Tracy, of Los Asso and some of the stuff that we do, you know, what is it about the way we work that keeps that from being a problem? Yeah, I mean, I think we have established some really great best practices in our process um, that have been proven to be successful with a lot of our um, longstanding clients. And one of those approaches is um, discovery, definition, and activation, mm -hmm. um, which we use a lot um, because that discovery is really kind of our time to educate ourselves, really understand that client's industry, their challenges. Um, and then we are able to kind of define what is that message we're taking to market. Um, and we have a nice, really proprietary part within that definition of really making sure that we're laser focused on mm -hmm. what matters most to that customer. Mm -hmm. So we've done all of our digging and background and research and then really kind of defining that for the client. Um, and then we go to market and we have a lot of tools that help us go to market. So I think having these process, mm -hmm. processes that um, have been proven successful and bringing that immediately to new clients shows that we are able to kind of onboard quickly. We have a short learning curve, but it mm -hmm. does take a little bit of that time and partnership to make sure that we are um, in sync and aligned with some of their challenges and objectives. So outside that, you know, sort of discovery, definition and activation process, are there other things uh, that we do for onboarding, for instance, 
uh, that help facilitate that uh, getting off on the right foot? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, we really like to implement a 30, 60, 90 day plan where that really helps us align with the client on expectations, clearly setting that foundation from the beginning of the relationship. What are our ways of working? I think that's a really important part of establishing a great partnership from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Talking about what successes have they had in the past of how they like to work with their agency. What things do we want to stay away from that, mm -hmm. you know, that are really trigger points for them or haven't been successful? And we can bring those ideas to them as well. So really aligning on that um, 30, 60, 90 expectation plan, ways of working. How many times do we want to touch base? Um, what are our kind of status um, uh, cadences? So yeah. a lot of that. And I think that really just helps get that natural conversation going with a new client. Mm -hmm. um, and talking about, like I said, setting those expectations early is mm -hmm. super important to being successful yeah. from a long-term perspective. So getting back to this idea of finding a good match, Julia, I know uh, you talked about industry expertise, you know, maybe being more or less important depending on, on the industry. In terms of uh, specific capabilities, do you think it's important uh, that marketers find agencies with specific skill sets uh, to the point of even maybe using multiple agencies? What's, what's typical? I would say more recently, clients are looking for multiple agencies. They are not comfortable having one agency support all of their marketing efforts. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, an agency who is thinking holistically about their business and has the ability to connect all those different activities in their marketing plan and, and be able to create efficiencies mm -hmm. in the way that the agency team is planning their media, planning their content strategy. Uh, I, I have seen clients go back and forth with going from one agency to three and then mm -hmm. finding out that that takes time to brief the different agencies and make sure that they're aligned and, and working together effectively. And yeah. so I, it does depend on the size of organization and the mandates that they have in terms of not potentially having one agency partner that could create some risk, yeah. but it it's interesting how that shifts back and forth. And I would say recently in conversations I've had with peers in my role, there, there does seem to be a shift back to having that one agency who can help bring it all together, mm -hmm. play that quarterback for that internal marketing team and and deliver those capabilities that, yeah. you know, again, address that omni-channel uh, you know, brand marketing approach. And I would say some of that shift back to kind of that one agency is because a lot of clients do have in-house um, kind of support. Mm -hmm. They do some, they do have some capabilities. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. are looking for that one partner who can help complement some of the things or mm -hmm. support them in areas that they can't. So they've kind of got their little agency in house and then they're looking yeah. for that one partner right. to kind of complete everything What's the good, for them. the good completion. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. We're talking about the difficulty in finding the right partner. And when you start to look at finding three partners, all of a sudden, you know, you've compounded that problem mm -hmm. uh, in terms of that front end. And then to your point in terms of uh, there being uh, silos of communication and problems and, and some mm -hmm. of that, it really, uh, can be much more effective if you find somebody who's got those cross compatibilities uh, and can handle it in one place. So uh, another thing that I know is very important, you know, from our years of experience here is just the personalities, sort of the culture mm -hmm. uh, and the chemistry. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about, you know, sort of what you see there, uh, when it works well, how you know it's yeah. working? Yeah. Um, you mentioned chemistry and I think the, the way that we look at chemistry is a combination of the people Mm -hmm. and the process. So bringing those two things together really kind of establishes that chemistry. Mm -hmm. And from a people perspective, I think it's finding people that share similar values um, about how you work, um, kind of what are your goals, um, how do you think about things. Um, you know, I think that shared value is important. Um, I think the other thing that's important just from a people in chemistry and culture perspective is having partners that you can trust. Mm -hmm. and trust is a huge part of this mm -hmm. and building that trust um, comes with um, both parties wanting to, or, or, or open to having difficult conversations, mm. 
um, when they're needed and being thankful for those difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's why you have a partner is to push you and to challenge you on both sides. And so um, I think that part of um, culture and being open and transparent is really important, at least from our perspective on when we've seen successful client relationships yeah, I, grow. I suppose that's part of the chemistry fit, right? If, you, if you've got an agency and a marketer who are comfortable with that idea and looking for that sort of synergy and pushing each other and challenging each other, yeah. it works great. Yes. If one of them isn't interested in that, uh, it's a disaster, yes. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in terms of, you know, trying to find some of that stuff, what are some key questions uh, a marketer who's looking for an agency should be asking them? I often appreciate when a prospective client says, what do you need from us mm. in order to be successful? That is an ideal question mm -hmm. to really kick off that conversation to what Tracy was saying. What, what's that formula for a successful client agency relationship? And just that self-awareness to know that it, it is a two-way relationship mm -hmm. is, is huge. And so being able to say, yes, we need you to be transparent. We need you to establish trust. We need you to... Uh, be open and direct with us and we need you to give us feedback and tell us when something isn't working and also be able to talk about budgets and what success looks like mm -hmm. and so all of that is important for the agency to be successful we ultimately want to make the client marketing team successful and so the fact that clients right out of the gate want to know, okay, what do we need to do to support you to make this entire relationship a success? Mm -hmm. That's that's huge for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I would say another question that I would be love I would love to be asked from a marketer is, and we often ask this of our clients, what excites you most about my business or this challenge? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that answer can tell a lot about is the agency really passionate about this business? Mm -hmm. um, excited about the opportunity um, based on kind of that answer and, and, and how they position that. So I think that would, is a great question for sure. marketers to ask. Mm -hmm. Julia, you mentioned budget a second ago. Uh, does a marketer have to come to an agency, you know, RFP process knowing, you know, what their budget is and sharing it with the agencies involved? Or is that, what's, what's typical there? What's gonna be most effective in terms of that relationship? So ideally, yes, you are providing the agency a budget range. If you have a specific example of what that scope would look like, right? You're asking the agency to come back potentially with some recommendations, an approach to a challenge that you've given the agency to help demonstrate their thinking and their process, the agency can't operate in a vacuum. They can't be, they, they can't provide solutions without any parameters around budget. Mm -hmm. And we know that some clients are told that they should not share that information with agencies, that they're concerned that the agency might come back with pricing that you know, is exactly what they've given, you know, mm -hmm. if you have a million dollars to do X, of course, the agency is going to come back and use all of that budget. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that that's problem, entirely though? true. I, I don't think that that's entirely true. Any agency can scale up or down their recommendations, sure. but it's similar to building a house, right? You are not going to be able to recommend you know, certain types of materials or finishes or, you know, even the square footage mm -hmm. um, if you don't have any sense of, you know, general top line budgets. And then ultimately, what are your goals, right? Sure. So if you are starting a process and you ha aren't able to share specific, clear vision of what what those goals are for that fiscal year, that budget should be aligned to the output sure. of, mm -hmm. of those to, to, to deliver uh, on those goals. And so, we often ask, as part of our process of vetting the opportunity, mm -hmm. those are key indicators for us if this is a potentially good client. Sure. If they aren't able to give us any information, then we will start to suggest some ballpark ranges. Does this mm -hmm. sound reasonable? Is right. this right. a lot of money to your organization to spend with an outside partner? Have you worked with an outside partner? If a potential client has never worked with an agency, that is often 
an indicator that they don't really understand what the investment should be and what they can expect in terms of the output. And so often I walk a client through the math of an agency team is based on the, you know, the skill sets, the people, and hours. That's really the nature of sure. our business. And so if they have a budget that is unrealistic, mm -hmm. we can easily get into that conversation and I can at least help them understand that their expectations are not aligned with most, you know, for, sure. for our agency or, you know, and we're similar to sort of the, the billing structure of, of other agencies of our size. In terms of that idea too, that an agency is just going to go off and spend whatever you give them. I think it's probably fair to say that most people would like to have more budget than they have. Mm -hmm. And at some level, it's like, okay, let us know what your budget is so that we can build out the best recommendation to mm -hmm. align with what you're trying to do. And here's what we think we can do with that amount yeah. of money. Right. Versus yeah. maybe we're going to come back and tell you, oh, you only need to spend half as much as your budget was. It's just, that's not a realistic right. thing. And, and part of my role, you know, within the new business process and just within the agency is putting the right team together mm -hmm. in place based on that scope and expectations and budget. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have all of that information, it's very challenging for me to find the right people to support the business in the right way with mm -hmm. the financial aspect sure. involved as well. And sometimes if a client starts out by saying, let's start small and let's prove ourselves, that is a fairly common approach. Mm -hmm. And even with that example, we do need to establish the budget that is enough to produce those initial results. So it is goes back to that process of being very open mm -hmm. and direct with a client and being able to have the money conversation is an important indicator of, you know, will this partnership work? So you've been through a lot of uh, RFP processes. You've talked about a few different things. Are there other uh, steps in that process that you've seen are super successful in terms of an agency and marketer mm -hmm. finding good alignment? What, uh, what, what works well there? Well, I think it's important that the agency team have access to all of the key stakeholders mm -hmm. on the client side. I have gone through pitches where we really were not able to talk to the, the most senior level marketing person. Mm -hmm. And they might not have been directly running the pitch, but if they're ultimately the most senior level decision maker and participating in the relationship, it's critical that the agency team start to build that relationship and be able to understand their, their style, their approach, you know, their thought process. Mm -hmm. And when that's not possible, we continue to ask, okay, who, who is on this team? Who will we be working with? Who will we, we be getting direction from? Mm -hmm. um, and if we don't have access to that key team, that could be a red flag. And, and clients often ask the agency, the people pitching, are they the ones going to be working in our business? I want to see those people working on my business. Yeah. So I think it's a fair question to ask yeah. back to them. Yeah. If you're going to be making a decision, yeah. we need access to you. What um, does that access typically look like? So I think one thing that we found works really well with pitches is the opportunity for the agency to get on a call to ask, uh, do a Q&A session mm -hmm. with some of the key client stakeholders. Um, I think it's important for actually both parties. Um, you know, we're given a lot of information, we need to digest it, but we can mm -hmm. see where there, there's maybe gaps or where we want to dig in deeper. And I think from a client perspective, that shows that an agency's curious mm -hmm. and that they're asking smart questions. They're thinking about mm -hmm. my business in a really interesting way. Sure. So I think giving that opportunity for a Q&A has really, I think, um, pushed the, the pitch and the RFP and the, and the mm -hmm. things that we're able to sure. bring into that meeting. And it it's a, starts to be a rapport builder as well, Absolutely. right? You start to check that chemistry, you know, yeah. as you're interacting, you know, is there some excitement on both sides yeah. in terms of like what we're talking about and the stuff mm -hmm. we're going to get into yeah. uh, potentially. Well, we found that feedback is often that you were the only agency who asked us this level of question or you asked to, to get more information. You ask to, you know, to get on a call, maybe a second call to even further clarify the ask, make sure that you're delivering what, what we're looking for. And so 
leaning into the process and, and making sure that even if it isn't explicitly stated that it doesn't hurt to ask mm -hmm. and clients appreciate that tenacity mm -hmm. and that willingness to demonstrate your interest and your passion. Mm -hmm. And so that's why sometimes when uh, pitches are run by the procurement department, mm -hmm. I have found that to be a challenge when the marketing team and the procurement team aren't completely aligned. Sure. And so we often will make sure when and respecting the procurement's role, because they do have an important role to play and you definitely don't want to go around them, but making sure that you are in communication with the marketing team and that mm -hmm. they are aligned because it, we've had situations where we win a piece of business and then the marketing team is kind of brought in mm -hmm. and that alignment isn't there right out of the gate. You, sure. you can get there, but it takes yeah, time. And I would say two other key pieces to an RFP that are uh, important to be successful in are establishing those key milestones. Mm -hmm. What are the deliverables? What are when are those happening? And then I think along with that is timeline. Mm -hmm. um, I think in an RFP process, the client is really anxious to get that new partner, right? Um, yeah. um, but I think making sure that that timeline is realistic and fair. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a client, I would want to make sure that I'm giving my partner enough time to be thoughtful mm -hmm. about what they're presenting, yeah. the, bi the business opportunities. So I think it's balancing that um, anxiousness and mm -hmm. ready to get started with kind of that reality of what time is needed to to get good thinking. What's fair in terms of, you know, in terms of what you're bringing forward or asking for on the marketing side of potential agencies in terms of spec work or strategic thinking or media plans? Like some of this is uh, you have a challenge, you want to see how an agency will address it, uh, but then everyone's got to do this work potentially and not win it. So mm -hmm. what what's, what's the POV on spec work in RFPs? It is still asked for and we will evaluate that closely. The, the best example that I have seen is when a client has a very specific narrow and focus challenge mm -hmm. that they can outline for the agency. And again, they work with you to make sure that you have all the information. The idea being that they're look, they, they should be looking for how you think, how you would approach this, and some strategic recommendations, mm -hmm. right? If you, you, you're a proven agency with you know, a history of clients, you've been in business for X number of years, I mean, you, you have the capabilities. It's, you know, this is an example of how you would approach our business mm -hmm. in this narrow narrowly defined focus and, and trying to be sensitive to the investment and then the time frame that you're giving the agency to, to respond. I would agree. I think the more specific, the better. Um, but I think spec work really gives um, a nice look into mm. kind of the creative chops. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's the exciting part of yeah. the output of a lot of what goes in that, that upfront is mm -hmm. to kind of see that end product. And it's exciting. And it can be fun um, for the agency team to work on It is fun for the agency. Sure. And it, it, like I said, gives a peek into our capabilities and kind of the mm -hmm. breadth of creative ideas that we can offer when you do bring that spec work in. Um, and I think it's really just a balance of like how far or how much you push yeah. mm -hmm. that. Um, and also, how does that line up with the timeline that we've been given? So <laughs> sure. it's, it's all balancing that. But I think a spec yeah. work is an important part because it it gives us an opportunity to showcase our creativity and our abilities. Sure. So I guess in wrapping up, I guess I would like to say, ask uh, anything else you think uh, clients should understand about agent, how agencies think and work that there's sometimes a disconnect on. Yeah, I, I think. For me, the most important thing is that the client should know that at the heart of everything that we do or we ask, it's because we are invested in their success as much as they are. I mean, that's at the heart of why we do all of this. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if we ask a question or if we are pushing back on something, um, mm -hmm. it's really because we want to see their success. Um, that's why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would add that I just read a book recently that was called You Get the Agency You Deserve. Mm. And there were some great tips in there about how the client can really get the most out of their agency. And at the most fundamental level, just sharing with the agency what inspires you mm -hmm. uh, and being clear in your direction and then making sure that what you're telling the agency is tied to a business goal. 
And so if you have that combination of, you know, being really open and, and clear, you're going to get a very passionate agency team who is you know, going to be thrilled mm -hmm. to be working with you and working on your business. And so that, uh, you know, and that idea of b being grateful, gratitude is a superpower for, um, I think, a client to, to let their agency know mm -hmm. that we're grateful for the work that sure. you're doing mm -hmm. and for the partnership. And so ultimately that will go so far in getting the best Sure. I, I, I think agency, agency support. I think agencies are willing to go the extra mile all, always and uh, very much grateful for some gratitude about yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. This was really fun. Yeah, uh, some good yeah. insights. And uh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Here's to finding the right partner. Cheers right. to 2024. <laughs> yeah.